Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to extract account information via the Trader API. And we have four new wrappers to get account information that I'll be going over. As always, we're gonna to have to assign our app key, our secret, and extract our access token. And we're gonna bring in our check access token function, which gets us a new access token if the one we have is expired. If you just landed here for the very first time, I show you how to get this information in part two of the series via our CS authentication script. So make sure you watch that and assign your values. We're gonna start off with getting our account numbers. And what this function will do is retrieve two things. The first is your account number as seen online. And the second is the hash value for that account. The Trader API doesn't want us to use our account number. Instead of what it wants us to do is to use the hash value for that account. So this function will help us retrieve that information. And if we open up this function, we're gonna assign our URL. We're gonna make sure our access token is valid. We're gonna submit a get request using that URL and also passing in our access token. If the status code for the page is 200, we're gonna return that information as a data frame. Otherwise, it'll go ahead and print out an error. So I tested this function and assigned it into account number. And if we take a look at that data frame, we have our account number as seen online, along with the hash value. Later on, when we start placing orders through the API, we're gonna need this hash value to route the orders appropriately. We're also going to need this hash value to get specific account information, as we will see later on in the script. So continuing on for our second function, we can retrieve account positions. Currently, the only field that's allowed is positions. So if we take a look within this function, we're gonna build our URL, check our access token, and submit a get request. And again, if the page status code is 200, then extract all the contents, otherwise print out an error. So this is how you would use this function. And we'll take a look at that data frame. And we have 75 entries for that specific account. So here we see buying power, our balances, that will serve as a check if you wanna see your balances before placing an order. Now we can also retrieve specific account information using this function. So again, similar to the one above, we're gonna extract the same information, but we have added a new parameter for the account number. So in case you have multiple accounts, you can specify which account you want to retrieve information for. So again, for the account number, we're gonna to have to pass in our hash value. And there's really nothing new within this function except for that new parameter, which gets passed in in this URL. Everything else stays the same. So if we check the contents, for our main account. We have the same 75 entries, but now we're able to get this information for multiple accounts. And for the very last function, we have transactions, which again are account specific, which are one of the five fields we have to pass in, along with the start date, the end date, the symbol and types. Now I have accommodated this function where the symbol and types are optional. The only things that you have to pass in are your encrypted account number, the start and end date, and the API states that the start date must be within 60 days from today's date. So just keep that in mind. And if you wanna retrieve specific information, such as trades, you can do that with types by passing in trades or any of these available types. And if we take a look at this function, as always, we're gonna start off with building our URL. Don't worry about the timestamps. It'll format it for you in the way that the API wants them. All you have to do is assign them in this year, month, day format and the script will take care of the rest. It's gonna check whether the user wanted to retrieve specific symbol and types. Otherwise, it'll skip over them since these get assigned up here as null. Once we have our URL built, we're gonna check our access token, submit a get request, extract the content if the page status code is 200, and we have some checks in case the user entered a specific field, but there's nothing for it as you will see in a moment. And also it'll return the error message we received from the API if there was some sort of mistake somewhere. In order to use this function, we need to set our account number, the start and end date. And if you wanna get specific, you could also insert the type. But since I haven't traded in this account, I got this message saying that there's nothing to return. So it was able to submit the get request, it's just that there's nothing for that specific type. If you wanna get all available transactions for a specific account, just use the first example. And if we take a look at that data frame, you'll get something similar. So I made a couple of deposits in my Schwab account, which gets shown here. Well, with that guys, this concludes the video. We are going to need our get account number function for our next tutorial, which will be placing trades. Just make sure you have this set up correctly and working properly. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.